Tom Mulcair, CTV News political analyst, former leader of the NDP, is joining me now. He met Queen Elizabeth at a Commonwealth conference. Tom, thank you for your time. Good to be with you, Todd. Your thoughts today? It's incredibly sad. She was an unbelievable, exceptional world leader uh, who did an amazing job. And people have different points of view uh, about the monarchy, whether we should still have that as part of our system of government here, uh, Todd. But if, if you look at the countries that are amongst the most progressive, think of countries like Sweden or Belgium or Japan, uh, you look at the countries that have that type of system of government and you say, okay, you can argue <laughs> with the very notion of having somebody being born into a job. But at the same time, there's a certain stability there in these constitutional monarchies that's hard to argue with. So we've been very lucky to have someone of her caliber as the queen for 70 years. We wish her son, King Charles III, all the best in that role, given the longevity of his mother and uh, his grandmother. Um, he might be with us as, as king for a long time. Tell me about that unique experience, Tom, of, of having an opportunity to meet Queen Elizabeth. Well, we were, first of all, prepped. We were told how to say, hmm. uh, the, the official word was ma'am, and it wasn't mom or anything else. And they told us to pronounce it like jam. That was being prepared for the meeting. And as you say, it was a Commonwealth event. And she, we were also told that we were not to touch the queen, but if she held out her hand, and she did, she held out her gloved hand. And one of the things that's remarkable about her is she connects immediately. She is very present when she's talking with you. So I spontaneously spoke English with her. She is the queen. And she asked me where I was from. I told her Quebec. She switched to impeccable, flawless French and only spoke to me in French for the rest of it. So she not only had that language ability, but she had that language sensitivity quite something. And you took away from that meeting just the, the remarkable sense of public service that she had. She is an incredible public servant. She knew and understood politics and politicians very well, but she always stayed one notch above. She mastered the art of saying the right thing at the right time, but unlike most politicians, she also knew when it was time not to speak. Uh -huh. And that was quite an art. She, yes. she mastered both. It's interesting, too, that Justin Trudeau calling her wise and curious, yeah. but also funny, with sort of a dry sense of humor, that kind of British wry There was a, there was a sparkle in her eye mm. that always lets you know that, one, she was very tuned into everything happening around her, and two, she was enjoying herself all, pretty well all the time. The other thing you mentioned was the notion that sometimes it's better to say nothing, and that was often the case with the Queen. She didn't see her role, Tom, as, as, as oversharing, if I can use that expression, that her role was, was very clear, and it was not to get into the fray. Exactly, and those are the monarchies that last and, and do a good job. Um, there was a, a big constitutional dust-up in Spain with uh, you know, the, the whole notion of whether or not there would be a separation of uh, one part of Spain a couple of years ago, Catalonia. And the king got his hands very dirty in, in that fight, and he didn't stay above the fray. Um, in the event the constitution prevailed, and Spain has stayed together as a country, but the monarchy lost something in the process. So knowing how to, to, to play that out, no, one way of looking at it is that in a constitutional uh, monarchy, um, the monarch reigns, but does not rule. There are limits on their powers, and that's why we still have a governor general signing laws into force, because it's a representative of the queen who has that ultimate authority, but much of it is ceremonial. But the very existence of one person, even slightly above all of the elected and all of their institutions, perhaps gives uh, time to reflect uh, a little bit more. Tom, what does this mean, this news for Canada? Well, it's going to be interesting to see because, of course, we've been with this queen for 70 years and there are not that many Canadians uh, who remember any other monarch other, other than Queen Elizabeth II. Will Canadians have the same sort of connection uh, with the new king? It's going to be difficult because, of course, he's the oldest person to have ever uh, acceded to the throne. But uh, all we can do is wish him well because Canada's constitutional order includes the the monarch. It's part of who we are. It'll be interesting to see if uh, 
the the government decides that his portrait, for example, should be on the twenty dollar bill like his mother's was, or if that will change. I mean, the, these will be subtle things. There are many parts of the Commonwealth right now where countries are simply pulling away and saying we want to be republics, but we'll keep our connection with the Commonwealth, but we won't keep uh, the the monarch as our as our ultimate head of uh, state. So we'll see whether. That type of change is eventually going to come to big countries like uh, Canada and, and Australia.